Hello everybody, Prince of the Bear here. We're back at Epcot, oh, of course. For the Flower and Garden Festival. Yes, so when the Flower and Garden Festival comes around, we eat plants. Lots of them, lots of flowers. So we're gonna head in and see what they got for us this year. Should we eat your veggies? You heard the girl. We have some grilled baby veggies with hummus. This was available last year. It looks, presentation looks basically the same. It's a little bit different. Let me go ahead and get some of the sauce with the hummus. One of these zucchinis. Mmm. The sauce is good. The hummus is bland. The veggies are charred. But I don't think they're charred enough. No, so whatever they did to season the hummus, it almost tastes like soy sauce. But I know that's not what it is. It's it's all right. The sauce is harassa sauce, the, the red sauce on top of it, which is good. Mm, I'm not sure if I, if I would put this even in my top three. It's not as good as it was last year. Yeah, I forget. Mm. Oh wow. It's charred to perfection. Absolutely love this. It's not bad for a little snack. It's like you dumped hummus and a little bit of spice on top of your garden. Two and a half out of five plus. I think it was a little bit better last year. I'm trying to be a little bit more sustainable nowadays, but uh these baby grilled baby vegetables, I believe, are a holdover from last festival. They're looking kind of good. I like the harassa sauce kind of laid out over it. I wish it was a little bit more hummus for all the veggies you get, but I'm sure it's enough. I'm just being, you know, a sauce mini boss. Look at that, little baby corn. Ooh. That harassa adds like a nice little element to the hummus. So just being plain Janet gives it like a sort of smoky flavor that I'm kind of here for. This is a, a nice little artful yeah. layout. So, having on the word, leaving the bottle. No, I feel it's flower and garden, they can do a little bit more. This is a nice little snack though. I'm just three out of five plus. I like the grill, the grill instead of the veggies. These got the grill marks, I hope they're real grill marks, but. A smoky flavor and the harassa saves it. So it's three out of five plus. Don't miss out on the edible flower. We're gonna give it to you. You paid for it, you eat it. Looks like broccoli. Avocado toast. We all know how much I love me some avocado toast. This one looks very beautiful, not gonna lie. I'm just gonna slice into it, I suppose right here. Not a lot going on there. It's just bread and avocado and tomato. Mmm. It's flavored quite nicely. There's a lot of lime in it, which I love. It, it helps to balance the acidity of the tomato. The avocado isn't too overpowering. It is pureed, which is more like a guac, and not so much like an avocado slices. I'm not completely mad about that, but I think I'm more of a fan of slices than like um, mashed. For a festival avocado toast, this is really good. Is it better than um, like center time? Mm, no, but it is very close. I'm at the point now where no festival is complete without some sort of avocado toast. This one is almost like an avocado sale. But you definitely need a knife for this one. And he's a messy boy. I'm 
Toes Hill one's gonna pinch on a lot of combo toes. Because this one is mixed heavily with lime. So I agree with the prince that it does feel more like a guac spread than an avocado toast. Each your own seasonings and whatnot. I usually prefer my avocado toast with like mashed avocado but chunky. Not slices, not spread, but like chunky avocado sort of mashed up. But this isn't bad. That's what it comes off like a, basically like I said, an avocado spread. Which isn't bad, but it doesn't have the strong avocado taste that I would expect from avocado toast. It tastes more lime than anything. Still not terrible though. Two and a half out of five. Minutes. Here we are, enjoying pineapple. Yes, still with his vegan friends, as long as it doesn't have soft serve in it. It's great to have when it's super hot out. And it's mild on the pineapple. I have to admit that Dole Whip has grown on me over the years, even though I'm not a pineapple person. The winning part about this is actually the cup. If Bear let me take this cup, I would. But it's basically like eating sorbet. Why am I still eating this? I don't even like pineapple. Dole Whip. Cannot have a festival or Disney or anything really without Dole Whip. I will never say no to any sort of pineapple. Unless it's canned. We don't do canned pineapple here. I just want to pull up a chair. Sit down. And peacefully enjoy this while people watch. It's good as I remember. Dole Whip. Probably my top three favorite Disney snacks. This is no exception. Three and a half out of five plus. This is Disney's fault. If this, if this poutine looks familiar to you, it should be. This topping is exactly what was on the plant-based mac and cheese for the Food and Wine Festival last year. If you guys don't know, my biggest weakness is mac and cheese. So I'm gonna be highly critical of this beautiful goodness here. Would I eat it again? Meh. It's more like a vegan hamburger helper. Two out of five plots. I wouldn't order that on my own. I have a feeling I know what it's gonna taste like, but with fries, Maybe it'll be a little bit better, since I'm not expecting mac and cheese. Mmm. Yeah. It's a much better topping choice than it was for the mac and cheese. And with your typical Disney fry, all of these fries fail the fry test. But they are topped with this and, I guess, some vegan cheese. Vegan cheese isn't too terrible. It's a little bland. The most flavorful part is the Italian sausages with the peppers. It is house made, but does not compete, does not even touch the incredible poutine that you can get at La Cellier. If you're gonna go for poutine, just go make a reservation at La Cellier. Don't bother with this. But it is really good if you just want it like a stand thing. Or if you liked that mac and cheese. Like I said, it is better on fries than it is on a mac and cheese when you're expecting mac and cheese. Yeah. I do admire that they finally have a plant-based version of the poutine on World Showcase, so I would make a reservation. What I don't like is that poutine is about the getting the basics right. Or you get the basics wrong is <laughs> using traditional Disney shoestring fries. I just don't have the service area to be what I consider to be good poutine. But I appreciate the effort at the very least. I feel like if I had a bigger bowl to spread some of this around, so I felt like the fries were evenly distributed with the plant-based meat, this would be an absolute win for me. I love the peppers and the spice, 
it's like a spicy spice, but it's like a, there's, there's a kick to it, a tang. I would give it like a 2 out of 10 on the spice scale, but it certainly helps. I would do this on my own. Doesn't look like much, but I'm impressed. Three and a half out of five applause. I want it to be known that Bear made me eat this all by myself. And obviously I didn't like it at all. No, really, I loved it. This is way better than the mac and cheese. I absolutely recommend. And now I'm full. Thanks, Bear. Thanks. Corn, fabulous, fabulous corn. Corn that has been covered in crunchies. Mmm. Smoked and covered in crunchies. Something about this corn makes it the best corn of all the corns at all the festivals. And it's vegan. I actually feel like covering with the countries kind of takes away from the taste of the corn. And I don't know if I particularly care for that. I think last year's was a little bit better than this one. But this is still a really good corn. You know, correct me if I'm wrong. I believe in previous years they wrapped this incredibly messy corn in paper. This year they have learned at least it's in foil. It is less drippy than it has been in the past. It's probably because some of these breadcrumbs soak it up. There's definitely a lot more than there were before. They're definitely learning that, uh, that the chief complained about was how messy this is. Uh, this is manageable. This I can do. See the breadcrumbs, see herbs, different seasonings. If you're doing corn right, see if you're doing the taste right. I feel like I have to agree with the princess. The corn is good. The herbs and everything are good, but I feel like the breadcrumbs, even though the crunch is nice, do take away from the flavor. It feels more muted than it was last year, and that I do not like. It's still, I think, an above average option if you're playing base here, especially if you're trying to avoid all meats. Three to five plus. Corn fail. Once you like start to get towards the, the bottom of the corn, the seasons are only on one side. So after that, it's just regular corn, roasted. Here we have a kale soup. It has like a garnish on top of it too. I'm a little scared. I'm not a big kale person. It does look like there's a lot of potatoes in it, so I'm cool with that. Mm. Oh wow, this is actually flavored really well. It's a little salty, but that's okay. The cracker is good too. It's tough with pesto. You can tell. And I think that's really what makes the soup. If you stir all this together, yeah, it's gonna be a little salty, but you have like a pesto tomato soup. Or sorry, pesto potato soup. And that, my friends, is a win. I'm really surprised. I thought this was gonna be the worst of them all. And this is actually really good. There's a kick to it, too. This is like the underdog right here. <laughs> Good. This kind of plant-based food, it's a hard sell to most non-vegans, because uh, it's not pretty. It's like swamp grass with stuff in it. I'm seeing this kale, some skin on potatoes, seasonings. It does not look like the most appetizing thing in the world. Super strong pesto flavor. With an overabundance of pepper. Luckily it doesn't taste very slimy, but the, the flavor is really strong. Almost too herby. I'm gonna set cracker. If you're a fan of really rich, rich soups, you might like it. Other than that, 
this is a fail. There's too many spices in there and too much pepper. This would be enjoyable on its own. Two out of five plus. So we have the beef tips. Now we've had beef tips in the past from a flower, from one of the festivals. And when we had the beef tips in the past, they were actually like little cubes. These are like little squares, almost like a tofu squares. And it's impossible meat, so that'll be interesting. And then, I don't know if you can tell, but there's like rice here at the bottom. So that's interesting. It's like a, a saffrony yellow. I'm gonna try and get a piece of the patty with this sauce here. Some of these veggies and this rice. Let's see what this tastes like all together. It's not horrible. It really tastes like impossible meat and not much more. The sauce is good. Like the sauce definitely gives it a little bit of flavor. The rest of it doesn't. The way that they, it almost tastes like they season this impossible meat in like some soy sauce. Maybe a couple of other things. Maybe some ginger. It's not bad, but it's not the most original way that I've seen Impossible Meat cook. Is it unique? Yes, but is it like so unique that I would proactively come here just for this? No. And I think that's kind of why they put it on the, um, the wok or the little like flower garden, what's it called? trail the garden grace <laughs> put it on the garden grace not just because it's new but because they need people to buy it i mean you could eat the impossible slider it tastes mostly the same thing you can taste the barbecue but it's very subtle i was really expecting it to be better than this especially since the beef tips were so good like a couple years back I don't want to say I'm disappointed because it's a very good addition. It's just not 100% what I expected from beef tips. This is the thing I was most interested in this year because you say plant-based and possible short rib, you got some things to live up to. I mean, if you guys have been with us for long enough, you know that my one doubt in all the plant based hood is your ability to mimic the flavor and taste of ribs, even short rib. As for the look, Looks more sort of like a meatloaf than a short rib, but it's got the same kind of coloration, so I'll give it a pass on that. Get some of this corn sauce, sorry not corn, the rice, and then the carrots, and let's give it a bite. Racy, racy. So, it's got like the smoky flavor, like a Korean short rib. It's a bit too soft, so it's chewy as I expect from my short rib. The flavor is there. It's definitely not ribs, obviously, but it goes a long way towards selling the idea of impossible meat or other plant-based meats as a replacement for those because the flavor is there and that's what matters. I appreciate the effort though. Three and a half out of five plus. Here's our vegan dessert. It's like a loaf thingy. Some Oreos on the bottom and black blueberries maybe now it falls apart and it gives you like a nice little cream action going on here it's a little minty it's a little lemony it's a little custardy. I don't think the lavender goes really well with it. It almost reminds me of like a truffle in like one of those um, Valentine's Day boxes or whatever, candy boxes. And it's just filled with goo. But it's like one of those unique flavors. So. I'm going to say that this is an acquired taste. Either you're going to love it or you're going to hate it. Me, personally, I'm not a big fan. I don't think Bear's going to be a big fan either. But if you like unique flavors, 
or if you're obsessed with lavender, this is the cake for you. Outside of that, not so much. My bases are such a mixed bunch. It's pretty. It's like a tube of loose pudding type substance with these berries. It's sort of sparkle here in the sunlight, you know? It's definitely very flower and garden. The flavor mixture that they had described in the ingredients though, it's gonna be a hard sell for me. It literally just tastes like I licked like a wet lavender slab. And it makes everything else, it goes down after that, even the berries, just a reek of the lavender. One out of five claws. Will not eat another bite. Here we have sopa de chorizo. Very nice. Very good chorizo. I don't know why I grabbed a fork because this is a hand. Sopa is always a hand thing. It's like a, a little biscuit, kind of. Mm. Crunchy, delicious, spicy. I love the lime, like avocado sauce. It's really good. This is a win. I'm actually really glad that we have something that is for us that doesn't need to be modified this year. This is a big win. Thank you, Disney, for this. This is so far my favorite item of the festival. So I see this, which is basically like a plant-based chorizo and refried bean for avocado on top of a hockey puck. And I can't help but ask, Italy, why not you? If Mexico can do it, I feel kind of bad that you can't. Mmm. It's a very satisfying crunch. More than I expected, I was expecting something more soft. The chorizo spice is just enough, not overpowering like I found with like real chorizo. And everything mixes well. That's like a, that is a significant win. I feel like uh, that's a huge step over just Taking a bunch of stuff off and getting beans on a tostada like we've been doing in the past. Four to five plus. Good job. Straight up pineapple. Fresh AF pineapple with tahini. So the only reason why I'm going to enjoy this pineapple is because I'm going to shower it in tahini. The tahini is really good, but I don't like the pineapple. It's too fresh. It tastes too much like pineapple. Obviously, it's supposed to taste like pineapple because it's pineapple, but I'd rather it just taste like straight tahini instead. Bear's gonna be able to finish that with ease. This is the one. 100% plant-based item. It is a festival that I will never complain about. Bad at Flower Garden. Last year, I am never going to be complaining about fresh pineapple. The hang only makes it better than me. Mm. I think the only thing that gets better it was grilled pineapple with tahini. Four to five plus. I can't stand her. Mm. It's so much fun. And she just it's all about her. Brand new fucking apple every day. So good. Potato pancakes. A repeat of last year. And we we smoosh and spread. Though I'm I kinda like it better without the applesauce. At least I did last year. I'm gonna try it with. Mm. So 
all right. It's a little sweet with the um, applesauce. But itself is much better. It's almost like a latte, but not. It's a little more salty. It has a little less um, ingredients in it. It's more like a, a latke meets like a hash brown patty thingy. And then you throw applesauce on it. I don't know about the applesauce. But I mean, I know Bear will eat it. He loves applesauce. Ready, ready, ready. I do love these like potato pancakes they have every year. But I'm getting kind of tired of them. It's time for something new. I'm hoping it tastes as good as it did last year. Which I devoured all of those as well. Because I breakfast. Fluffy hash browns. How about applesauce? I'm mad at that. Three out of five plus. This is a lemon magdalena cake. It has a fig compote and a beautiful sangria gel. And of course, flowers. Because what is Flower Garden Festival if you're not eating all of the flowers? Okay, so the cake is super hard. It's not easy to cut into. It's a nice little fig compote that'll make it sweet with the sangria gel. Ooh. I'm struggling over here. There we go. This is a really interesting flavoring to it. The fig compote gives it a, a very weird not a taste that I'm mad at. It does remind me a little bit of Persian Eats. Obviously it's Middle Eastern-ish, so it makes sense. I think the fig compote is really the win here. This is like a jam, it's almost like a fruit roll up. But then you have it with this lemon next to it. And then the sangria just kind of brings it all together with the, the sweetness. Morocco, you're showing up finally. I'm liking this. Will I finish this? Probably not because this is a lot of dessert for me, especially with whole pieces of salt on it and whatnot. But I'm glad I get to share it with Bear and that it's plant-based. So, it's like a lemon-based cake, basically, with fig on top. Now, normally, I'd be 100% against this because you guys know I feel about lemon, but it sort of reminds me of like a fancier Fig Newton for, you know, us class of swines like myself. The fig is really strong. It's good, but I would watch how much of this you take a bite of, bite of all at once. Because it will punch you in the throat. You know, the cake is firm. I feel like it has a nice consistency. But the whole thing together, it's super rich. I don't know if I can finish one of these on my own. But I do appreciate the effort. Three out of five plus. If you don't come and appreciate the topiaries, why do you even come? Um, for food? You come here for food when you have this? You know, I actually do recall seeing these two at uh, uh, Four Seasons. Four Seasons when yes. we went there to review. Exactly those two. Those are the exact two. Hmm. We have a watermelon salad. It's basically like watermelons on the bottom with arugula sprinkled on top, a balsamic reduction. And then our favorite friend, the pickled onion returns. Of course, you know, Disney's got to put that pickled onion on everything. This bite is too big and I'm gonna regret this, but I commit to my mistakes. You have the sweetness of the balsamic, 
the tang of the pickled onion. The arugula kind of balances the two. And then just like a gush of watermelon, which kind of like mixes all of the flavors together and makes it this beautiful like explosion of flavor in your mouth. This is a really good salad. I know Bear's not gonna like it because, you know, it's got watermelon. The arugula with the balsamic reduction and the pickled onion just flavors with it perfectly. This is a salad I wouldn't typically picture myself having. I would imagine it with strawberries instead of watermelon, but it's a great combo. I'm here for this. Watermelon salad, this had to be modified. Normally it does come with the cheese on the top, goat cheese. They were able to modify it fairly easily. Uh, now I would normally hate on this watermelon salad, but I did like the one that we had in Sanaa. So I'm wondering if this one will compare. Definitely did not skip on the balsamic, that's for sure. You know? Sort of vinegar with the, with like slight sweetness of the watermelon. With the arugula, actually works kinda well. I really don't hate that. Three and a half out of five plus. So what was your favorite item this year? I'm gonna say my number one was probably the new poutine, surprisingly. And then my number two was the new sofa. Okay, that's fair enough. I'm giving my number one to the poutine. The second one is probably going to be that delicious pineapple skewer in the Africa Outpost. Or, I'm sorry, the refreshment outpost, and we're calling it now. But... No, it's the Africa Outpost. Officially, it's the refreshment outpost. I thought, oh, well, that's the name of the stand. Yes. yes. So. But we want to know, what did you guys like? Is everything we had this year? Let us know in the comments. Is there anything else you want us to try at the festival? Or anything else around the Walt Disney World? The comments are going to be the place to let us know. Hit the notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday. We will see you soon. Be sure to subscribe. You heard the girl. Now this is the salmon with the farro and minced herbs. However, we veganized it. Instead of putting salmon on it, they actually put veggies on it. Which I didn't even think they could do, but how cool is that? So I'm gonna try this farro. It's cool. It's very citrusy. But it's got like a different flavor to it. You can definitely tell that it was designed to accompany fish. Just because it's very prominent with the lemon flavor. From flavorful, I'm gonna go with the hummus as the winner for today. Oh, that's for this farro, which looks like Gigantic oatmeal grains and oat trailer. I'll leave the princess her tomato. Oh. I'm not really sure what the supposed to taste like. But I definitely do not like it. One out of five plus. Robert Sherman, the Sherman Brothers. They compose so many songs with such a wonderful, optimistic philosophy. We just love it. Well, Pocahontas is a beautiful movie, and the music was composed, of course, by Alan Menken, the incomparable.